Hey everyone, what's going on? Something a little bit different for today. I'm going to be, well, I guess it's not too different because I've done it before in the past. What I'm going to do is try to refurbish a cartridge by cleaning it and replacing the battery. But that's not all. This is effectively a vlog type video that's disguised as a battery replacement. Just wanted to, you know, kind of change things up a little bit because I've been pretty much just doing reviews and reviews and reviews, it seems. Although I did do the GBM modding video last week, so it's a little bit of a change, but I want to try to keep that going so that what we're going to do is, uh, pretty sure the inside of this is going to be the same as an SNES cartridge, and I've worked on those before, so it shouldn't be too big of a deal. Uh, and if this goes well, we'll do another one. You're going to hear a fan come on in a little bit because I want to try to blow away the uh, fumes from soldering. So I apologize if it's uh, disruptive, but uh, better safe than sorry. So we'll start with just removing this price tag. And while we're doing this, I'm going to go over a few things. Basically a channel update, I guess we'll call it. So first of all, as of today, which uh, should be a few days before I post this video, I am up to 81 subscribers, which is awesome. Thank you, guys. It took me a year to get to 50. And then in a month, I added another 31. So that's kind of wild, right? Now this is yellowed. Hopefully, it's just gunk. But if it's yellowed, I might have to retro bright it. We'll see. So yeah, but thanks guys, that's that's really awesome. Uh, like I said before, I'm really amazed that so many people want to listen to what I have to say. Let's see if we can get to 100 by the end of the year. I mean, I don't expect it, and I'm not asking or begging or anything, but if we did, pretty cool. And if not, so be it. Next update is that I realized that I have a quite a few unfinished projects going on. Namely, my classic Mac videos, which I have to get to, as well as the Mac lot that I picked up over the summer back in June, I think. I don't remember. I think it was June. So I want to make sure that I get that going at some point. I also have... The C64 that I picked up for spare parts that I used to repair the main C64. I think it's got a RAM issue. I've got to check. I'm not sure. The uh, The problem there is, is that I don't have... Well, I've got a few extra chips of RAM, but uh, I don't know if it works or not. So we'll have to find out. The Going back to the Classic Max, though, I have footage recorded from uh, when I disassembled everything. Unfortunately, I don't like it, but I can't re-record it. Whoops, that's not supposed to happen. I can't re-record it because it's like a one-time thing. It's a disassembly. I'm not going to put everything back together again and then take it apart. That would be kind of ridiculous, right? So I'm trying to edit it so that it's somewhat viewable. I don't know if I'll be able to actually make a good video out of it, but I still want to release it because it's going to be important so that when I get to the actual refurbishing process, it'll make more sense. Maybe I'll just turn it into like a clips video. I'm not sure. We'll see. All right. So Nintendo doesn't necessarily label their cartridges, the batteries. So this is a plus. That's a minus. We know this because if we turn it around, Top is plus, bottom of these batteries are minus, and this is where the plus tab is. Plus the, <laughs> no pun intended, plus the uh, positive tab is going to be typically larger than the negative one. Now, I want to try and use an actual battery holder so that the battery just has to be changed instead of desoldered and resoldered every single time. But I'm not sure if this will fit. Actually, it probably isn't that much taller. And the standard battery, it'll probably still fit. If not, then I've got the good old standby pre-tabbed battery, so. Let's 
So unfortunately, from here on out, the audio is going to be a little bit different because I unfortunately knocked the camera over and didn't realize that the microphone was disconnected. So instead, I'm doing a voiceover for the rest of this video. Picking up from where I left off in terms of the updates, you know, I also realized that I never actually went over the first C64 that I picked up and refurbished. I didn't even fully test it because of the fact that I don't have an actual test harness. I keep meaning to get one. I just keep putting it off. But on top of that, I also have the SD to IEC that I haven't showed off yet. So I need to demo that as well and get some disk images on there and some ROM images and play around with it. So that'll be a future video coming up. Oh yeah, follow up to the Amiga 500. The last time, uh, I believe I showed off the GoTech and the PS2 to Amiga mouse adapter, but I never actually did anything else with the Amiga 500. So quick update is I had to get a 3D printed bracket for it because the GoTech would not fit with its original shell. And I didn't want to just leave the bare PCB in there because there was no way to mount it. But I picked the wrong one. The one that I picked up was designed for the OLED display mod that you can perform. So it doesn't quite fit the three digit seven segment display that the GoTech comes with by default. So, but I'll make do with it. I, I have different plans for it anyway. I don't want to have the display mounted on the side. So I'm rerouting wiring up to the top. And for now, I'm just kind of propping up the display in one of the vent holes. I want to try to get something a little bit more appropriate, more of a semi-permanent mounting for it. So that way the display is facing you. You can see it when you're hitting the buttons to go up and down the discs. You're not trying to guess, oh, what number am I at? Or you have to sit there and look on the side and it'll be more visible. So I'll put that video out soon. I also have the Sega Multicart that I have to go over. The third party Sega controller that looks like the SNES style controller. I haven't gone over that yet. I haven't gone over the Hyperkin Genesis clone console. So we have to go over that. And yeah, so those are... Some of the things that I still have to circle back to and create content for and videos and put that out there. So I do apologize if any of you have been waiting for any one of these specific things. What else? Oh, I also have an update on the G5 iMac. I went and finally purchased a more appropriate mount for the SSD. You can see it here. It's nice, you know, nicely mounted. It's not just jerry rigged or anything. And in case you're wondering what mount I picked up, it, this is what it is. I don't necessarily recommend this one. It's just what I could find locally. There are more appropriate mounts that'll effectively turn that two and a half inch disc into a three and a half inch form factor. But this one worked for me. It was only a few bucks, so whatever. Oh yeah, and I completely forgot about my retro PC build. Quick update on that. I have to scrap it because I can't get the sound card to work in Windows 3.1. Tried a bunch of different drivers, couldn't get it to work. Looked up online, found some recommendations on alternate PCI sound cards that should work in 3.1, and I still can't get that to work either. Tried a bunch of different drivers again, and it just will not detect the card. DOS is fine, but Windows 3.1, no go. So what I might have to try to do is find a socket A motherboard with an ISA slot and pick up an older sound card like a SB16 or AW32 or something like that that I know has working 3.1 drivers. Now, the reason I want to go that route is I want a computer that'll work with DOS, 3.1, 95, 98, and 2000 and maybe XP, which is why I wanted to go with the uh, AMD socket uh, 423 based processor. Sure, I can go out there, get a socket 7 motherboard, and uh, maybe use my K62, but kind of limited to how many operating systems I can run on there. And I don't want to have multiple systems for different OSs. So that's why I'm going to go that route. I'm not sure when I'm going to have that done, though. I have a few other projects, obviously, as I mentioned before, that I want to cover before that. So maybe a little bit of time before I revisit the retro PC build. So going back to the video real quick here the uh, with the battery replacement. Unfortunately, the battery holder will not fit. It seems that the mount holes on the PCB are a little bit narrower than the tabs on the holder. So I have to revert back to the tabbed battery. It's fine. It'll last another 15, 20 years. And, and by then, I might not even have the game anymore. So not a big deal. And now I'm just 
you know, finishing up, cleaning up the cartridge, cleaning up the excess flux and everything. And I'm going to put the cartridge back together. And then we're going to test it out and see if everything's working. I also realize again that the cartridge really is severely yellowed on the back half and the front half. And it's really strange that that's the case. Because this is the second cartridge that I've run across where half is yellowed, the other half isn't. Maybe uh, both halves are made from a different type of plastic. Hard to say. But yeah, I'm probably going to end up retrobriting it just to make it more consistent with the front half of the shell. But I'll do that off camera. It's going to take too long. So, And the reason I'm using the Hyperkin console is because it doesn't have the tabs inside that prevent non-North American SNES cartridges from working. That's basically the only lockout measure that Nintendo implemented between the North American console and the Japanese console. It's just little tabs. That's it. Now, you could take an original SNES, break the tabs off, and everything would be fine, but then you're kind of damaging it. So you either want to use something like this, or maybe use a Game Genie or a cartridge adapter, which you can probably find online for like 5 or 10 bucks. And here I am demoing the newly refurbished cartridge, well, except for the retro writing process. And to my surprise, there are save files on here. And I don't understand why, because the battery was disconnected for more than a couple of minutes. Now it's possible that the memory still had a little bit of a charge in it, and it was able to retain that save data. Nice surprise though, so for those of you that are concerned about replacing a battery and potentially losing your save data, you might have you know, a few minutes to do that. I can't guarantee it's going to work with every cartridge, but it's possible if you research the SRAM chip ahead of time, you may find in the specs sheet that it may say, yeah, it'll retain a charge for a few minutes, so... But I'm kind of relieved because this way I don't have to play the game for like 20 minutes before I can get to a point where I can save it and verify that it works, so awesome. But we're going to test it anyway because what I want to do is run around for a little bit, add another minute to the time, and then we'll save it, reset the console, and see if that save data is actually saving. And as you can see, it did save. The timer increased by a minute on the save file, so awesome, everything's working. And well, that's it for this video. What did you guys think? Do you like this vlog style video or this totally unscripted type video where I'm just doing random things? Let me know in the comments below. If you liked it though, hit the thumbs up. If you haven't yet, subscribe, but no pressure, you don't have to. If you didn't like the video, please hit the thumbs down but also leave a comment below as to why so I can try to use that to make improvements going forward. Otherwise, guys, thanks all and I'll catch you later.